How's everybody doing this morning? Good, good, good. It's good to be here. I appreciate everybody for coming out. Everybody that's also with us virtually. Um, you know, before I start, I just wanted to acknowledge I appreciate the fact that you provide a space for our youth to have a voice. Because in a lot of spaces, we kind of disregard the importance of our youth having a voice. And that is really ultimately why we do this work, why we're here that we can invest in our youth so that they can pave a brighter future for us. So the fact that you would have them participating and they feel comfortable enough to be present and to share their voice, that is vitally important to any work that we do. Um, as was mentioned, I'm gonna be speaking on present day freedom seekers and the power of our stories. And it is customary in the tradition of my people that before we speak, that we ask permission from our elders first. So I see a lot of my elders here this morning. So I wanted to ask permission for me to speak first um, from those of you. Do I have that permission? Okay, so now, if you have any problem with what I'm getting ready to say, you can talk to the elders because they just gave me permission. <laughs> okay, um, I wanted to start off uh, with this particular slide because I think when we talk about history um, history is, is really fashioned as mythology. And the more knowledge that you gain and the wiser that you become and the greater understanding that you begin to see some of the events that have happened in the past, you realize that there's a lot of people that's making up myths about what happened, right? And anytime we think about movements of change, we usually have a figurehead or a face or archetype that represents that movement of change. Um, so, for example, if I were to ask you, who's the face of the civil rights movement, who would you say? Martin Luther King, right? But we oftentimes don't talk about those courageous people who opened up their homes to him and his colleagues because they couldn't get accommodations at different locations where they were speaking or people who were preparing food for them. You know, these were people who were equally as important in those movements. And these were everyday people doing extraordinary things. And it's important that when we approach learning about history, her story, our story, the story, that we always consider that there were many people whose names we do not know, right? When you look at this particular slide, I wanted to start here because it's important to understand that all of us had two parents, whether or not we have a relationship with them or not. Um, and those two parents, which means we had four grandparents, eight great grandparents, 16 second, great grandparents and that becomes the construction of our roots right all of us are really just a composite of everyone who came before us the good the bad and the ugly and what mirrors the roots are actually the tree that we actually create whether we have children or not we all have ideas and those ideas also represent the seeds of life that become contributions that we share with this world to enhance the quality of life of others and in order for us to fully understand our purpose for being here, we have to be able to take an honest look through the lens of our ancestry. Now, some of you sitting here right now, when you look in your ancestry, you might see Confederate soldiers. You might see people who actually owned enslaved people. You might see people who escaped the Holocaust in Nazi Germany, or you might see people who were actually a part of the German regime. Right. And you have to really be honest enough to take a look at that lens. But in looking at those various different aspects of your ancestry, the good, the bad, as well as the ugly, you make a decision whether or not you're going to be a descendant, which means to fall downward and to look at those contributions or those experiences of your ancestors as a burden to you. Right. Or you can look at yourself as an ascendant of those ancestors a person that rises in power and influence because you've learned from those who came before you. Um, oftentimes, there's a very unrealistic perspective that we have about history, and we think about history as events that happened 200 years ago, right, 2,000 years ago. But oftentimes, history is just walking around in your own household. I teach youth, and I tell them all of the time, talk to your parents, ask them what they were doing or how much candy cost when they were growing up. It's a lot different than what you spend on things today or ask them about some of the challenges that they've gone through. And that's history that is right in proximity to them. 
Whereas sometimes we think about, oh, children need to know about something 200 years ago. They can get there, but they need to know what you went through first. They need to know what their aunts and their uncles and their grandparents and their great grandparents actually went through. So that type of history is vitally important when it comes to the growth and development of our youth, as well as us understanding our own sense of purpose and what we contribute to this world.